Hey guys, in this video we're gonna be setting up infinite scrolling in your Rails application using Stimulus.js. So Stimulus is gonna allow us to listen to the browser's scroll event on any page that has infinite scrolling turned on um, with the controller in the HTML. And we will basically look for the bottom of the page when the user scrolls, to see if we are at the bottom. And if we are, we will make an Ajax request to load more content from the server. It's gonna be pretty straightforward, but let's dive in and see how it works. So as you can tell, we've already set up a post uh, scaffold. There's really no data in it, um, but we do have the pagey uh, library doing pagination for us. So we have the pagey nav here, and that is defined in our post controller .rb. Um, we basically take all of the posts, pass them into pagey for pagination, and it returns us the pagey object and the posts for the current page. Um, we have to include that from application controller, the pagey backend, and inside of application helper, we have pagey frontend. So that's how you install pagey, um, but you can use this technique for infinite scroll with well paginate, Kaminari, or any other pagination library. We're just gonna be using uh, pagey for this example, but you can use anything you like. So what we need to do is basically uh, add some JavaScript to connect the infinite scroll to this and make sure that we're scrolling and able to detect when we hit the bottom of the page. Then we're going to update our controller to render new entries for us and send that back over with an Ajax request. We'll insert those into the page. So let's go start by adding our uh, data controller infinite scroll to our posts on the index page. So that will connect these controllers or this infinite scroll controller to this HTML. And that's good. We're gonna want a data target around these entries in the results. That way we can append more entries into that section. And if we add a data target here to the pagination area, we'll have infinite scroll.pagination and infinite infinite scroll.entries. Um, that's going to give us access to grab those easily in our uh, stimulus controller. So we can say static targets equals entries and uh, pagination. So we want to call a scroll function in here whenever the browser scrolls. To do that, we can add a data action here and say on scroll on the window, we want to call infinite scroll scroll. So that should set us up. Let's refresh our page and make sure we don't have any JavaScript errors. And as you can tell, um, references undefined method scroll. So we need to make sure we save that file so it can access that. And we shouldn't have any errors now. So now if we scroll, there's no errors, but we can print out you know, the window.pageY offset. This is the offset scroll height that the user is currently at. And you'll see this number change and get smaller when we scroll up and it gets larger when we scroll down. So this is great, we now have a connection to that, but we need to calculate whether or not we're at the bottom of the page. So bear with me, we have to do a little bit of stuff for browser compatibility. We might need to actually do more stuff for uh, full compatibility, but this is the example that I've got so far. Um, so if you want to grab the height of the document, um, you're gonna need to look at the document body or HTML of the document element. Um, and then you're going to need to calculate the height. Um, so that's going to be the maximum value out of all of these options, depending on your browser. So we have body scroll height, we have body offset height, we have HTML client height, HTML scroll height, and HTML offset height. So the maximum largest value out of all of those should give us the correct height. Then we can check if the window page Y offset 
is greater than or equal to the height minus the window dot inner height. And that should tell us we are at the bottom. So we can say console.log bottom, and that should let us know when we've hit the bottom. So let's try that out. We don't see that printed out here at all. If we go to the very bottom, it lets us know we hit the bottom. Now, you might want to also subtract like 50 or something from this number um, over here because you might want it to trigger before you hit the bottom of the page so that the user doesn't hit the bottom. Um, it would actually feel more infinite so then they are not at hitting the exact bottom. So you could subtract, you know, 50 or 100 and that's going to trigger uh, 50 or 100 from the bottom. So let's try this now. We can go down here and you'll see on the right side, my scroll bar hasn't quite hit the bottom, but it's starting to log those messages on the side. So it's kind of up to you on how you want that to work. Um, I'm gonna leave that out, but you can play with this and make it as flexible as you need. Now, the other thing we want to do here is we wanna grab the URL from the pagination area. So we'll say this.pagination target. Um, we want to find inside of there the anchor tag with the rel of next. That is the element in uh, pagey that it generates that has the href to the next page. So if this query selector doesn't return us a um, an anchor tag, then we know that we don't have another one of those, um, another page, and we don't need to load anymore. So we'll do this right now, but we're probably gonna have to come back and do the href only if that is found. But for now, we can say, let's add a load more method. Load more. We'll send in that URL that we just grabbed from the href and we'll make a Rails Ajax request to the server. We want to send it to that URL, and we want to make sure that our type of request is a get request. Now, um, this request would normally just grab HTML, but we want this to grab some JSON back. So we're going to set our data type that we want to receive to JSON, and on success, we will take that data and do something with it. So let's print out that data for now. And let's go into our uh, post index one more time. And this area where we have our entries, we actually wanna replace this with a render posts and extract this into a partial. So let's go into app views posts post.html.erb partial, and we'll paste that in. So the reason we're doing this is because we want to render out the default page when you load the page, but our JavaScript needs to retrieve the next page of that, but it's only that small portion. So it's kind of like PJX. We're only um, sending over data for that piece of the page. So inside of our post controller, we can go into our index and we can say, let's respond to two formats. The first format will be the HTML format like we normally do. But if we make a JSON request, then we can render some JSON that will be in this format. So we'll have our entries, we'll render to string the um, partial of posts, just like we extracted out, that's the exact same render call. We're gonna, instead we're gonna render that to a string and we're gonna have this format as HTML. So this is already in a JSON format when it's processing this block and we have to tell it to use a different format, otherwise it would try and use JSON by default. So we want to render the HTML and include that as a string inside of our JSON. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to have the pagination sent back as well so we can update that with the next page URLs. So we will say view context.pagenav and 
pass in at pagey. That's going to allow us to call that pagey nav method from our views um, inside of our controller. So that gives us access to all of the data that we need. We can refresh our JavaScript and scroll to the bottom and if everything works correctly, we should see we get some JSON back with the entries, which are all of those uh, posts that we retrieved and then our new pagination HTML. So now on our JavaScript side, when we get a success back from here, we can say this.entries target insert adjacent HTML before the end, um, so inside of the entries div, we want to insert all of the data entries that we just retrieved. So that what that's going to do is on our post index, it's going to append all of that new HTML right after this render post, before the end of this data target. So that's our entries target, and before the end on the inside, we will append those. And then we need to go to this.pagination target, and the inner HTML on that, we want to replace with data.pagination. So what that will do is take all of the HTML inside of this div, which is the pagey nav, and we will replace it with a new pagey nav. So when we scroll to the bottom again, it will actually go and use the new URL. So we're keeping that up to date along with the entries as we scroll. So these two sections are always going to stay in the same spot. This one's going to have a lot more posts added to it and it will grow in size. And the pagination div uh, data target it will actually just have the insides replaced every time we load the Ajax. So let's try this in the browser. Let's open up our console as usual to make sure that we don't have any errors when we hit the bottom. But here you can see that it is loading all of these new pages as soon as we scroll to the bottom. So this is working really nicely. It is just depending those, we can continue scrolling and get to the bottom of our list. So this works great, except we're going to hit the very bottom and we're going to get an error. And the reason we get the error is because it's trying to access the href of null. So this next at the very bottom, the very last page does not have an anchor. So for us, we have the span that says next, but it's disabled. So in that case, we need to update our JavaScript to not grab the href directly off of the um, last anchor because it doesn't exist. So what we want is we want to say, you know, let maybe next page equal to that target. And then we will say um, return. Let, let's actually just exit out of this function first. So we'll say, let URL equal next page dot href, um, but if next page equals null, then we will return. So we're exiting early because there is no next page. We don't need to process that anymore, and we can continue on with the next page href. Um, so we know that we have that. So now let's refresh this one more time and make sure that we don't have any errors when we get to the very bottom of this list. So our JavaScript, as you can tell, is not very complicated. We are just simply um, doing a calculation of the browser scroll height. That's probably the most complicated piece of this. And then we're making an Ajax request and serving up a tiny portion of the page inside of JSON. So our JavaScript can choose where it goes uh, correctly. So as you can see, we hit the bottom of the page and it was um, successful, no errors, and we now have infinite scrolling in Stimulus.js in, you know, 33 lines of JavaScript. Um, if we deleted some of these spaces, it would be even less. So it's extremely simple to go and set up something like this. We're taking advantage of all of the uh, pagination that we already have, and our index, HTML ERB, simply has a couple extra divs to tell the JavaScript where to put those entries and where to replace the pagination. Really nothing more to it and it works out very, very nicely and you can use this code in our infinite scroll controller in your application on any page that you want 
it will automatically work for you. So that's it for this episode, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.